Hey everyone, it's JC for Ink on 3. For today's project, I am showcasing Ink on 3's Water Lily. Before I begin, uh, did you all know that there's a difference between a lily and a lotus? I've been using the two interchangeably and now I feel really dumb knowing that they're not the same. So please tell me I'm not alone. <laughs> uh, anyway, this card is going to feature some Copic coloring, heat embossing, and background techniques. Here is Ink on 3's Water Lily stamp set. When you purchase the stamp set, a free downloadable cut file for your electronic die cutting machine is automatically sent to you. If you don't have an electronic cutting machine, such as the Silhouette Cameo or Cricut Explorer series, these images are easy to cut up by hand and I'll show you that as well. First, I will work on my background for this card. While Google image searching lilies and not lotuses, <laughs> I was inspired by the dark water backgrounds and vibrant flowers against them. I deconstructed the scene and made it my own with the included dragonfly image from the stamp set. I find to create a successful repeat background, I need to start in the center of the panel. Starting from the center and slowly working my way out to the edges of my panel enables me to completely fill the panel without awkward empty spaces or uneven spacing. I used the original Misty to get this lined up correctly and an inexpensive black dye ink to stamp the dragonfly images. The stamp positioning tool isn't necessary for this project, but it does help me since I am filming and I really don't want to start over again if an image isn't perfectly stamped. Once I've stamped and filled my background, I'll add black splatters. This is going to help give the illusion that every empty space is filled in on this panel. And also planning ahead, I know I'm going to cover this background slightly with some vellum. So I don't mind that this is a little excessive. I'll set this panel aside to dry and work on the floral arrangement for this card. Off camera, I went ahead and stamped the flower and lily pads in Ink on 3 Blackout Detail Ink. This ink is excellent for watercolor and alcohol marker coloring since it is waterproof and bleed proof when dry. Now, I would love to show you all the coloring process of this card, but my head was in view of the camera the entire time. Uh, that's what I get for trying to make a card without my glasses on. <laughs> uh, I wasn't doing anything special when coloring this flower image. I simply worked from darkest to lightest marker uh, blending along the way. I've got many coloring videos over on my channel and many creatives here on YouTube have their own take as well. So now that I have the images colored, I'll work on cutting them out. I will pull my trusty swivel knife out to fussy cut out my colored images. If this is your first time seeing this tool, it is one of my top 5 crafting tools. This knife works just like your electronic cutting machines. Uh, the blade rotates to follow the directional cutting movements. So instead of being completely linear like a regular craft knife, you're able to trace the outline of an image just like a pencil. And once again, I'd love to show you all, uh, but my head was in the way again. Once I have all the images cut out, I'll work on the second element of the background. Here I've got a panel of vellum cut to 3 and 3 quarters by 5 inches. I'm going to pull out two warm gray Copics and roughly color one side of the vellum. I'm adding a dark spotlight essentially to the center of this vellum panel. I'm not taking the time to blend this out. In fact, I love the striations and I think it will balance out the dragonfly background from earlier. So this vellum panel is where I will adhere my floral arrangement. I know it's not easy to tell, but I currently have the reverse side of the vellum piece facing up. In other words, the colored side is face down. I will begin arranging the cut elements of this card, keeping in mind that the sentiment has to go somewhere on this vellum panel. I am making sure that the floral focal point is framing the sentiment. And once I am happy with the placement of all my elements, I will work on permanently placing the sentiment. I will bring the vellum, floral arrangement with press and seal, and the Thinking of You sentiment stamp to my original Misty. The press and seal is simply there to help me carry my floral arrangement without losing any of the pieces. I am doing it in this way so that I will stamp the sentiment in the exact spot I originally planned and so that I know that I will not cover the sentiment with the colored flowers and pads. I will stamp the sentiment in Ink on 3's Juicy Embossing Ink after prepping the vellum with anti-static powder. 
The embossing powder I'm using is Ink on 3's Gold Rush. It is one of my favorite gold embossing powders. And now that I have my sentiment placed, I'll begin gluing the flowers down to the vellum. I'm using liquid glue and adding glue closer to where a stem would be on these flowers and lily pads. What I like to do is create artificial dimension by curling up the leaf and petal tips so I don't glue the entire cut piece down. I will add a large foam square to one of the flowers to add some height to the arrangement. I adhered the dragonfly panel to a vertical side folding card base and the last thing I will do is add the entire vellum piece to my already prepared note card base. I am hiding the adhesive behind the floral arrangement. Uh, I don't mind that the vellum isn't completely adhered to the note card base. I like the fun interactive element and the texture it creates. And that's my final card project using Ink on 3's Water Lily. I hope you all enjoyed this video and card making process. I love the gray gradient vellum piece underneath the floral arrangement. I think it helps balance the repeat dragonfly background and spotlights the colored images with a band of darkness with the Copic markers. And of course the gold embossing adds an element of shine. Hey, thank you so much for watching my video. If you like this card from Ink on 3, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe by clicking on my face in the center of the screen. On the left is my previous Ink on 3 project, and on the right is a playlist of my Ink on 3 videos. I'll talk to you all very soon, and have the best day.